Hello, so today I'm here with another friend of mine and we're going to be talking about the experience machine uh, by Nozick. So, um, yeah, you've read a little bit, well, actually, you're the only person I've had on here that has read the entire thing. I mean, granted, it was four pages, but, <laughs> you know, it's a little, yeah. little clap to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fast reader, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm a slow reader, but besides the point. So, um, I just want to ask you first off, generally, I mean, uh, what did you take from reading this article? I mean, it was a pretty straightforward idea, you know, it's people that were on one side, they want to, like, experience things from their own point of view, you know, whatever they take away in life, and then there's people that, like, they don't want to do it, and they'd rather, you know, as it said, have a machine do it for them to make it, like, what's the word I'm looking for? more catered like exactly how they want it and like yeah. strict to like uh, you know a script yeah perfect life basically that's not yeah. authentic yeah that's all it was like authentic versus you know to a t by a machine yeah so um well i guess the first question i would ask you is would you plug into the machine absolutely not i think the whole point of like you know being on the side against it is you know people there's two ways you go you can have experiences happen to you or you can make the experiences happen and i feel that making the experiences happen are more special you know you you know you're not going to know what's going to happen you know you can go up and talk to somebody be like hey and they could be like hey back or you can go up to somebody and be like hey and they'll be like yeah don't talk to me and they can just walk off but like with the machine you kind of know how it's going to go you're up to them and say hey and they're just going to say hey and then you know, it, again, it's very straightforward and it's going to be the same experience every time versus, you know, doing it yourself. You don't know what's going to happen. It could be completely different. You okay. know, I feel there's something special there. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that and the best example I could say is like asking out a girl that you really like. You know, yeah. Uh, who knows what she would say if you go up to her and ask her out? But in the machine, she's going to say, "Oh yeah, please date me right now. Like I love you." You know, because yeah. that's what you want. Yeah. It's going to be exactly what you want. Yeah, it yeah. should be head over heels. And so, I would say that your philosophy in this is that you appreciate the authenticity of whatever happens, no matter what happens. That's what yeah. You, you, you take it in strides, you know. Obviously, there's going to be the good and bad stuff, but that's like, you know, that's the whole point that that makes you who you are. You mm -hmm. know, plugging in the machine, as it said, you know, you're just sitting in a tube. You know, that's not really a way to go about things. Yeah. You know, what's the point then? You know, you're just not going to do it. You're not going to experience things. You know. Yeah. I get it. You know, from the safety point, but still, you know, it's not a way to go about things, at least from my point of view. Yeah, I mean, I I pretty much agree with you. I I do appreciate the authenticity behind the good and the bad, and I would say that the biggest thing is like, even with the bad things, like that that shapes who you are. And yeah, I, mean, I would. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would never go back. Yeah, sorry, but I mean, yeah, I would never go back. You know, bad stuff happens. You know, well, but as yeah. you said, you know that that sculpts who you are. That makes your choices. That you know, that dictates your whole character. Yeah, because I would say with a personal example, I mean, as you know, but, you know, we're going to talk about this a little. My ex-girlfriend, she was not a good person and put me through a lot of bad things. But, you know, if I didn't go through that, I wouldn't have learned to, you know, watch out for those things or try and find a better person. You know, if everything just worked out dandy, I wouldn't have learned anything you know, I would, it, everything would just be handed to me and, and, you know, everything would be great because of that. I mean, I guess another example would be like, you know, a rich kid who just floats by, you know, because dad works at a fortune, is a CEO of a fortune 500 company versus somebody who, you know, had to toil and scrape yeah. by and then eventually yeah. made it, you know, I mean, who has the more, more of a, um, I mean, the case could be that the rich kid could have better morals and be a better person in general, but you know, yeah, generally, it's different coin, yeah, you know, generally those be, bad he things. He could be good. He could be good with stuff like that, like running a company, things like that. But he could absolutely have like terrible like people skills, or just like when he doesn't get his way, he could like freak out or something because he's used to being in a company where like at the head, people are like, "Yes, we're gonna do this," yeah. versus like you know. I would I would definitely agree that objectively you're gonna gain more uh, from bad ex worse circumstances than somebody who's just 
it gets given to. I would definitely yeah. Agree you with learn that. from stuff like that. So let's say that. Okay, let me let me backtrack a little bit. So what? Why do you think the authenticity matters? Because in your like in the article, it does say you wouldn't know that you're in the machine. Like you would think these are real experiences happening to you until you're outside of it, and then you're picking whatever the uh, next few years is for you. So I mean, when you really look at it, is there a difference? I mean, objectively and subjectively. Let's go with there. So objectively, would you say there's a difference? I mean, being in it, obviously not. But I'm, from my, you know, what I got from, you know, reading it is from the looking glass in like somebody looking in at them. You yeah. know, they, they can obviously notice it and tell. Maybe it's the person that was in the machine when he's out, you know, he might get some things. But again, because it's not tailored to him, you know, it's not going to go the way he wants and he's going to pick up on it and then they're going to be like oh I want to go back to the machine or whatever you know but then like the regular person's be like well you know stuff happens whatever but you, you, you understand what I'm trying to go with that yeah yeah um but like so, to the guy in it obviously it might not matter yeah so subjectively um subjectively it depends on the perception of who's in it who's yeah, watching yeah. you know that so yeah that definitely I definitely get what you're saying there objectively I mean yeah, there's technically again, the no difference would pick up on it yeah there's technically no difference objectively but subjectively there's massive differences um, yes you know and I would say I I I mean I would I would agree with that I would agree with that definitely because and I mean another thing that the article sort of goes about is like how do you even know um, like what you would want out of life if, like, you've never actually experienced these things or yeah, whatnot. Yeah, that's that's really true. Like, I didn't even really think about that to be honest. But that, yeah, yeah, because like yeah, you wow. know, okay, yeah, because you're just in it. You, yeah, because you have no concept of like anything. Yeah, you're just used to again. You're used to having things happen to you, and not making things happen. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, that's kind of bizarre. Even in the machine, like let's say, like if you, I guess the best way to, I guess the best way to uh, sort of make this into an analogy, for a person who's never experienced any of these actual, like hasn't experienced life that's out of this machine that they have made for themselves, it'd sort of be like somebody gaining a perception of real life by like watching a movie so like i feel like the person who only lived in this machine would have a twisted sense of what reality is and oh, what they okay, would want yeah, yeah I, I i get what you're going for now like everything's like out of proportions or is just completely yeah. inaccurate and i think you know if you have those foundational blocks of reality that are skewed from not actually experiencing anything um, you're just building up more and more blocks of, you know, these values that you set yourself that aren't even anywhere close to reality. You know, like, it's multiplying yeah, it, as your life goes it's on. It's just rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, you're just building up, like, just fake stuff. Yeah, and it gets worse and worse. And, I mean, um, it reminds well, that's me... That's what I was kind of saying before. Like, when they're out of the machine, they're not going to notice. But, like, the people that are outside are going to notice immediately. Like, oh, he's doing this strange and this doesn't make sense and whatever. That's that's what I was kind of going at before. Like, they, you know, they pick up on it immediately. But to them, you know, it might be still kind of business as usual. The people that were in it when yeah. they're out. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I I actually watched a movie right before reading this article. It was called Vanilla Sky. Have you ever heard of it? No. Well, basically, this movie is. Um, this guy's rich, you know, like, he just goes through life, you know, he's like, everything's good because it's basically handed to me, you know, um, and I'm trying to give a very brief synopsis yeah, of this yeah. movie, but, um, basically, he starts going, like, uh, for lack of a better word, like, schizophrenic, like, he's seeing his ex-girlfriend yeah, that, out. yeah, he, he, he sees his ex-girlfriend girlfriend that disfigured him by like driving off a bridge in a car who she died um she said he starts seeing his ex-girlfriend be his girlfriend now and it freaks him out and like all this stuff happens right and it gets to this boiling point where he's in jail because he kills his 
girlfriend because he thinks his girlfriend is his ex-girlfriend. And it turns out that um, at a point in his life, he signed up for this uh, program that puts you in limbo. And basically, you pick your dream. Your like when you're dead, they put you into this like dream state, mm-hmm. and you pick whatever happens. And since like all of his stuff was so skewed, like it basically turned into a dream from a nightmare. So yeah, so, so he his brain struggled and tried to put the pieces together, but they didn't fit. Yeah, because things basically. were skewed, you know. Um, and basically, in the end, like he wants to get out of this and he wants to be alive you know rather than just everything being handed to him so he like learned from this experience so it's kind of like the art the book to be honest the what the the article yeah it was it was it was actually surprisingly close i thought it was weird because i literally read this the day before i mean i watched the movie the day before i read this so i was like wow that actually lines up pretty well um yeah that's pretty interesting so let's say um let's say you let's say you are forced to go into this machine now as you are now and whatnot um what would you think of that like what would be your emotions and your thought process if you're forced to go into this machine even though you know you get everything you want the dopamine the you know whatever chemicals you need in your brain I mean, am I aware that I'm in it? Yes. Like, well, you're not, like, you know outside of the machine, but in the machine you don't know. So how would you feel going into the machine that you're forced into? Being forced into it? I'd, obviously, I'd be super upset. You know, I'm leaving family behind. I'm leaving life behind. You know, goals, things that were happening, things that could happen. You know, I get people going into it, but from my point, there's going into it, there's so much uncertainty because, again, you know, I would know that everything would be dandy inside, but, you know, you're, and the flip side is you're leaving, you know, a whole life behind, a whole bunch of scenarios and things that could happen, and it's just, you know, I again, I would be very instant, very unhappy. Yeah. But that's what I would take. Yeah, I, again, I, I wouldn't want to do that. Would you feel like you would be at peace? Like, like let's say you go through the process of grief, you know, with, with this you know would you do you think you would eventually arrive to the conclusion that like hey you know technically you know this is going to be you know basically the same thing as living my life so do you think you'd come to a point of acceptance um i mean obviously again eventually you're just not going to know you're in it so i would say say, like I again the problem with the machine is eventually you'd be forced to just do it regardless of what you know your viewpoint is because you're in it you're doing it for a certain amount of time you know if you do something in you know in real life whatever yeah for a certain amount of time and you just keep doing it repeatedly eventually it's going to become the norm, the norm you know and I feel it's the same way the machine is even if you're against it you know once you're in it you're in it the show is over you know yeah and I mean like that this is what i'm getting at is like you know in the in the machine you're still gonna be with your family you know you're still gonna you know work you're still gonna you know whatever yeah so like that's what i'm saying is like i feel like if you were forced to go into it i think you could find some acceptance in that without you know being i think the only problem i with the article that i read is that they said at some point you get to come out to pick more stuff yeah you know what's going to happen like when you're out are you going to realize a bunch of your family's dead or some big event happened that you missed i think the problem with that at that point is you're going to either you're going to not care or you're going to be super struck with grief and you're going to form a dependency on the machine you know yeah. because you're going to be on this where we're like you know oh no my nephew died or whatever but then in your head you're like i could just go back in the machine they're alive and i can keep experiencing that you know yeah. There's you know there's there's more of a pull than like a push to get out of it once you're in and like things are happening in the outside world. Because I think, I mean, this is coming from you know something that somebody who hasn't been in this machine and it not existing or anything. But in my thought process right now, I feel like if I was forced to go into the machine and then I was put out of it to pick things, I would try and kill myself. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, I'm not aware that was on the table, but 
you know, I'm just saying from like a talking standpoint. You no, know, yeah, I'm you, just talking. There's, there's yeah. going to be a lot of either way. There's going to be psychological damage. Yeah, I think that would totally like if you were to come at it from living a normal life to going into that, like that would be so. Yeah. And then waking up and, what, and you're like, oh my god, I'm 10 years older and like you know. Yeah. How <laughs> I value, I didn't even take that into consideration the body aging, but what i how i'm perceiving it is like it's the same as a drug eventually if you do something you know like that enough yeah. you're gonna form a dependency i think that's a i think that'd be a way of for some people Especially to cope with the fact in the paper you know you're getting dopamine and all that stuff yeah yeah absolutely absolutely i could see it becoming a dependency and people just choosing it over you know being out and that's the problem you know the people in it versus out the people in at first they're gonna be like yeah i don't want to do this this is awful but then after being in it, they're like, yeah, this is all that there is. And then the people outside are like, well, this is pretty awful. You know, they're stuck in there and there's nothing you can do. And they're like, I'm just going to keep living my normal life. So, you know, it's kind of a 50-50 argument. Yeah. and Which is, you know, how I feel. I think, I mean, this brings us to something that I wanted to sort of say towards the end. But, you know, whatever. Um, I think the biggest thing with this is that it is so far outside of the realm of what nature is that it just yeah. puts it puts us off you know it's like we can't really i i guess the closest we can say we can put this in our heads to understand it is that it's this is basically a dream so like yeah. it's asking it's, would you rather have a dream yeah like would you rather have a dream or would you rather like live it and it's like you know in our heads we're like obviously we don't want to want the dream you know but yeah. they, i mean most people would you know not everybody obviously but you know and i think that's where that authenticity arise like why we want that authentic um yeah because you know what's happening it's, yeah it's guaranteed you know yeah, like I, I, I think that's where we arrive to the answer of why we want that authenticity. Um, but to go on to something else, I mean, I, I pretty, pretty sure I already know your answer already, but I'm gonna ask you anyways because we're gonna jump off of that. Um, like, let's say you had a family member who wanted to go in. I mean, how would you feel? Like, would you let, would you let them in if you had the chance, if they wanted to? But you no, had the, yeah, absolutely not. If, if there was some kind of issue with their like quality of life and this would like give them the chance to improve it maybe but honestly i'd probably try to go against it if it was absolutely not necessary you know if they're just a normal healthy person maybe fine but like if they're like dying or something and this would give them like maybe even even something as minuscule as like a week extra to live in peace and like fine you know i would let that slide but like if you're talking it's just a regular healthy person absolutely not yeah, I. That's where I was gonna go with it next. Was like, you know, what happens if it's like your grandma or whatever? That's like, you know, what pretty much exactly what you said. And I would, I think I would agree too. I mean, um, you can tell me before you keep going. Before you keep going, the only other thing I could see was like maybe they want to live like a some like a moment from the past for like a day or something. Not even if like they're dying or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I could say yes, but again, the same thing we rehashed a while ago it can form a dependency yeah you know you like i want to experience like when i was 10 and i go on the machine i'm like man this is awesome and then you guys pull me out in a day you know obviously i'm gonna want that again i'm like man i want to feel it's like 10 again you know yeah what, what's what's you know when do you stop pushing and when do you start pulling like, when do you when do you where, where do you draw the line with this you know the machine you know yeah it it, it definitely can set up something unhealthy um in a otherwise healthy person but you know, to go back to uh, what we were saying, like, if it was an old person or, like, somebody's quality of life was not well, I mean, I think I would be more inclined to say yes. Um, yeah. Now, I don't want to... Just tell me right now uh, whether you're comfortable with this, uh, if I can give an example with your mom specifically. Yeah, I'm fine. I don't really care. Yeah, like I said, I mean, nobody knows who you are in this, so... You know. Yeah, whatever. Um, so, just as some background for the professor, whoever's listening, um, you know, your mother uh, plays video games a lot. She uh, doesn't have the best quality of life right now, you know. Um, yeah. Problems between her and your father, um, and 
you know, some problems with, with you and her and your brother and her yeah. and whatnot. Um, so let's say your mom right now, who's a person who she's not going to die tomorrow. You know, I mean, she has some health problems, um, but she's not going to die tomorrow more than likely, you know, I mean, who knows, but you know what I'm saying here? Um, she doesn't have cancer or anything like that. Um, not come wood. Yeah, I'm just saying though, you know, like she's <laughs> you know, like she's yeah, not gonna yeah. die tomorrow probably. So but she doesn't have exactly the best quality of life. Yeah, I, I get I get what we, we, and I feel like she sort of does this already. I mean she plays games oh, absolutely. like absolutely. Yeah. I mean the which, difference the difference is it's a computer. Yeah. I but mean, you can say a lot of stuff. At the same time though, she pretty much only goes on the computer and plays games. You know, yeah. She doesn't. I mean, uh, does she really go out with you guys? Um, recently, yeah, due to uh, yeah, just an event we had. I don't want to go into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, she's actually she's actually been doing really good. I don't know if it's on topic or whatever, but yeah, she's actually kind of changed since that happened, and she's kind of been doing a little bit better. Well, yeah. I mean, it, that doesn't exactly go with it, but I, I. Yeah. I know exactly. Let's say you know, uh, you know, a few months ago before the incident that happened, um, you know how she was. She wasn't really going out with you guys. You know, she was pretty much only in the game anyways, and playing games yeah. anyways. So like, this is basically. I mean, yeah, you get to go up to her and be like, "Oh, hey, mom, whatever, you know, I love you," or whatever. You yeah, know. she's not. She, she's not there. Yeah, basically. So, would there be a real difference if she was in the machine? Uh, this is why uh, yeah, I picked you, by the way. Yeah, this is why I want to talk. I, I, to you. I know, I know. Technically, no. I mean, to be honest, technically not. It, just in this situation, to me personally, like, like me saying, it would still, you know, not be good. You know? Yeah, she's, yeah. You don't get you know, to see her around. and everything. She's, you know, yeah, I don't get to go up there and talk or whatever. But to her, absolutely not. I don't yeah. think there would be a difference. Again, I think as we were saying she would have a higher quality of life being in it yeah. it's sad to say but yeah yeah you're pretty correct on that end yeah and like, that, like, like I said I wanted to talk to you about this because of that and and that's it. the problem is the whole the article is it comes down to choice yeah you know yeah uh, and I mean would you let her do it if you had the power to say yes or no yes but I I, I don't think it's my right no you know? i'm just saying you I, know, I hypothetically think... if you like would you yeah, just say tough. whatever she wants to do even though you want one thing or just say yes because you know she wants to like how would you approach that or just say no because me you don't as a want person to? i think i would probably say yes because i know she'd be happier to be honest yeah. i think i would say yeah yeah well That'd be a tough call, but I think that's what I'd come down to. Yeah, I mean, there are some um, ways to describe, you know, certain lives in the article, but I don't want to accidentally offend you by putting these labels because they're kind of harsh labels. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, that besides that, um, yeah, I I think that's a good way to uh, wrap it up. Um, honestly, so is there anything you want to say about this topic or anything in general before uh, we get going? I mean, it was a very interesting read. I mean, I haven't really read something like this or thought like this in a long time. No, yeah. I, I haven't been really book heavy in probably, honestly, eight years now. I used to be very book heavy and I used to read stuff like this. It's kind of refreshing to read something like this that makes me think. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't really done it in a long time. It was definitely very interesting. I'm kind of happy I did this. Uh, I, I, I came into this thinking this was going to kind of be boring, but this was actually a very decent read and a very good talk. Well, I think that's in great. In terms of discussion. Yeah, I, I, I think that's very good to hear. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I we could talk about this, you know, in our own personal time. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I appreciate you doing this. Um very much so, and I appreciate you being will willing to talk, you know, more personally. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, I mean, I mean, you know, just like that, I don't yeah, really care. I just, you know, I wanted to ask you before I explicitly 
said, oh, yeah. hey, your mom, you know, she's exactly like this, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah but, um, yeah, that was, it was a good time. Um, I'll talk to you soon, buddy, okay? Yeah. All right. Thank bye-bye. you. Bye-bye.